morning, everyone. I am Reverend Patricia Guthman Haresh. You can call me Pat. I'm the developmental minister of the First Unitarian Congregation of Ottawa. Although the doors to our building are closed to do our part in preventing the spread of disease, we still are a vibrant congregation with open minds, spirits, and hearts. Whatever your heritage, whatever your faith, whomever you love, and however you identify, today you are a part of our community. This morning, I welcome you into my home. This now is uh, not just the dining room table where we eat all our meals. It is my office. It is where we do schoolwork. And now it's part of our really big sanctuary. My dining room, your kitchen, and also today uh, in Deirdre's home, <laughs> we're all together in these spaces. Thank you for inviting us into your home. It is a beautiful thing to think that even though we are in separate places, protecting ourselves and others by staying away from crowds, being two meters or six feet apart, here we are together online, listening, connecting, and even singing. I hope this moment finds you well. A few announcements. When the building is, or while the building is closed, uh, staff are working remotely and won't regularly be in the office. From home, they will be monitoring emails as they usually would. Uh, phone calls will be checked less regularly, so emails are encouraged. As we won't be seeing each other in person, it is more important than ever to be signed up to receive the EUU email newsletter, our weekly newsletter. Sometimes if there's a special notice, we might email you sooner. Check our Facebook page and the, the website for notices and uh, updates. Uh, you'll see actually that there's a lot going on. Uh, we now have a subscription to Zoom teleconferencing, and many of our groups are starting to use Zoom to connect. If you go to our website calendar, you'll see there's lots of Zoom meetings going on and get-togethers. Look on that calendar and see what's going on. Starting this week, there will be four open Zoom check-ins uh, at different times. I think there's one Tuesday morning, Tuesday night, Wednesday for lunchtime check-in, and Thursday afternoon, the uh, uh, way to find them will either, you'll either see it in that last EUU, or if you go on Facebook or, or perhaps even the webpage, um, just to say hi and touch base. And there'll be Thursday night sing-alongs with Deirdre. Check out the EUU and the Facebook page. Um, to schedule a Zoom conference, please email Jen, the office manager, at o m as in me r at firstunitarian.ca. Just as before, I want to thank again uh, Isabel Burrows and all her helpers for organizing our check-in call list, uh, and thank you to all of those uh, uh, volunteers who are doing the calling. Starting this past week, now we have more than 20 callers attempting to call, I think, around 300 people. If you haven't received a call from First U, I just saw uh, one in my email today. Uh, let Isabel, me, uh, at minister, uh, minister at firstunitarianottawa.ca or, again, Jen, know, and we'll get you on that uh, list of people to be called. Uh, and, and if you send your phone number, just in case, it might be that we didn't have your number. So be sure to do that. Um, in this time, may it just be physical distancing, not social distancing. May we remain connected by phone and text through every device and means we know how through this electric highway. We needn't be alone. We can be in touch. So I'm going to light the chalice soon. I'm going to point out this is our traveling chalice. 
Um, one that uh, the lay chaplains take or whenever we need to be on the road. Um, I didn't want anything to happen to our precious <laughs> ceramic chalice. So here's our rough and ready uh, chalice uh, in my home. And when we're lighting the chalice today, I'm thinking about uh, the topic that's been on my mind. What are those huge moments in history in our lives that we think back on? Might it be World War II, the Great Depression, the Montreal Massacre, and now the 2020 pandemic? I think we're in the midst of a seminal moment. What will we make of this moment? What will we make of it, this moment we find ourselves in? These words come from the Reverend Benny Hackett Evans. Each of us brings a separate truth here. We bring the truth of our own life, our own story. We don't come as empty vessels, but rather our full people. People who have our own story and our own truth. We seek to add the truths and add to our stories. This gathered group is rich with truth, rich with experience, all manner of people, needy, joyful, frightened, anxious, grateful, tired. We all bring our truth with us. May we all recognize the truth and the story in everyone's life. And may we hear and honor the truths that we all bring as we gather together. Together we have truth. Together we have stories. Even online, together we have community. Let us sing the chalice song. Now is the time for a moment for all ages, whether you're a child by age or in spirit. Before I start talking more, I want to show you something. Do you know what that is? It's a small chalice, my oldest, uh, and, then it, and it had my oldest son's name on it, Will, W-I-L. And this was the first chalice he ever made. He made it when he was probably five or six, and now he's 17 years old. We have moved that little chalice to many countries and places since he was five. But we have held on to this chalice as it is so precious to me. Think about the meaning of a chalice, our chalice to all of us. Every Sunday we begin our services lighting the chalice. I don't know if you noticed that Deirdre also had a chalice with her, her own little candle on her piano. Um, and maybe if, if you're one of the children, you may start your morning downstairs on Sundays in, in our building as well by lighting a chalice. Um, and just as I mentioned, this is our, our own first you traveling chalice. Today, even though Unitarian Universalists around the world aren't meeting in their buildings because of coronavirus, we are still lighting chalices, chalices of hope, sacred symbols of our denomination and 
congregations, each of us bring our own meaning and, and it has its own significance to each of us. Last week, Nao, our religious exploration director, shared about uh, a lesson about chalices in our weekly EUU. If you saved it, go back and take a peek. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it. If you go back, you will see that she, she shared the history of the story as to why chalices have become a symbol of Unitarian Universalists. What is this thing about burning a flame in what was a cup actually originally? You can look that story up. I'm not going to share that story this morning because uh, and, and there, I probably have told you some about it before and I'm sure I'll tell you again. What I wanted to raise up was Nao's suggestion last week that we might make our own chalice, especially if you don't have your own chalice already. Do you know in some of these Zoom conferences, people have been bringing their own chalices uh, to the discussion? Uh, we can have a chalice at home too, but let's think about making one. Maybe you have clay at home. Maybe you have objects around the house to which you could fashion a chalice. Um, something that's, you know, a cone on the bottom and you can put a bowl on top and if it's something you can burn something in. Do you know I've actually seen pictures of chalices made out of Legos. So if you got Legos around, maybe you can think of how can you make a chalice. One thing also that Nao said is she suggested that if we're starting to make chalices or if we have personal chalices, we could email them in to Nao. She's dre at firstunitarianottawa.ca. We could mail in pictures of our chalices and we can start putting them in the EUU. So have fun, of, fun with it, make a fun chalice. So it, it would be a great stay at home project, right? Because we're all staying at home. Um, we're gonna be spending a lot of time here, right? Let us have our own chalices so that we may be reminded of this congregation and what it means to us, this Unitarian Universalism and what it means to us. And when we light it, may we feel connected to all who are lighting chalices, whether it's on Sundays or every day. May we put a chalice in a special place in our home like an altar. And may it help us feel connected, peace, and comfort. Even if your family is driving you crazy, and I don't know about me, uh, uh, yeah, if your family, certainly not mine, are driving you crazy, you may all gather and light a chalice together and even sing the chalice song or spirit of life. So email those pictures to Nao or Jen. And um, I also, you know what? Why don't every time we gather uh, in a meeting or for the fellowship hour following the service, why don't we bring our chalices, right? and be it, have it be part of our Zoom conference. Just like a lot of our committees will start and our teams will start with lighting the chalice. Just like Will's chalice brings so, memor so many memories to my mind, perhaps you with your chalice will remember this important time in history when you look at that chalice as, as well. So, um, yeah, did we, we already sang our song. We're gonna sing another song. We're going to sing a very favorite song. Deirdre is going to lead us into our familiar hymn, Come, Come, Whoever You Are. Feel free to sing it as a round with me uh, as you're singing at home.
Thank you, Deirdre. This is the time in the service when we are drawn closer to the heart of love at our center. May we hold in our hearts all those who have suffered loss and sickness during this time of coronavirus. Those who are feeling fear and anxiety, loneliness, those who are most vulnerable, let us hold all in need in our hearts and minds. May all in need experience compassion, grace, and mercy, food and shelter. In the words of Reverend Gary Kowalski, fill us then with reverence and compassion for all who are kin, cloud and sun, sibling and cousin, the multitude of beings who share this improbable and never to be repeated moment. Today, I will be placing stones in the water that some of you have asked me to place uh, for those you are thinking of, for joys and concerns. A stone for all hospital staffs having to face the devastating reality of treating those affected by COVID-19 with the absence of adequate preparation and supplies that they may heal as they help others in healing. Two stones for family members delivering food in this time, just like the hospital staff. They're kind of on the front line helping us, aren't they? A stone for a loved one hoping that they will quit vaping. A stone, a big one, for the joy of being in community here at First Unitarian Ottawa. A stone for those in isolation. And in particular, those in isolation with partners with dementia. Two stones for those self-employed who in this time especially of everyone staying home have no income. A stone for two emergency room visits this week. Kind of scary, yeah? But it just ended with going home with pain medications. So thankfully. A last stone for all those joys and sorrows that you are holding in your hearts. May the joy spread with each ripple of water as well as healing. Next week, if you would like me to drop a stone for you, please let me know. Or a stone for those you're thinking of, a stone for the world. Now let us take a moment to join together in silence. Breathe in, breathe out and hold all the joys and sorrows of this gathered community in our hearts. Let us be still together.
A reading from The Traveler, a poem by John O'Donohue, one of my favorites. Every time you leave home, another road takes you into a world you were never in. New strangers on other paths await, new places that have never seen you will startle you a little at your entry. Old places that you know well will pretend nothing changed since you last visit. When you travel, you find yourself alone in a different way, more attentive now to the self you bring along. Your more subtle eye watching you abroad and how what meets you touches that part of the heart that lies low at home. How you unexpectedly attune to the timber in some voice, opening in conversation you want to take in inward on some unsaid dark, to create a crystal of insight you could not have known you needed to illumine your way. When you travel, a new silence goes with you. And if you listen, you will hear what your heart would love to say. A journey can become a sacred thing. Make sure before you go to take the time to bless your going forth, to free your heart of ballast so that the compass of your soul might direct you toward the territories of spirit. May you travel in an awakened way. May you travel safely, arrive refreshed, and live your time away to its fullest. Return home more enriched and free to balance the gift of days which call you. Why a poem about travel? I think we're all kind of on a journey now, whether we're at home or go on walks. We're on a journey. Everything changed on Friday the 13th, right? March 13th. It almost seems like a lifetime ago, a time gone past. That weekend, that same weekend of March 13th, um, our nephew, John's brother's son, our nephew Ryan got married, got married in North Carolina. Can you imagine getting married when a pandemic is rolling across North America? Many people had to send regrets. Even John uh, flew there and returned, uh, well, drove and flew there and returned before the wedding because he heard that they were going to be closing down the border between Canada and the US. Crazy times, huh? In my mind, I've had this picture of our nephew uh, Ryan as an old man with his grandson on his knee saying, let me tell you a story, son, right? Do you know grandma and I got married during the pandemic of 2020? We survived the pandemic of 2020, right? That's, I, I just can imagine it. If there ever were a time to take up journal writing, this is the time. We are all going to have stories to tell about this time, our stories of survival. From this morning's reading, every time you leave home, another road, takes you into a world you were never in. And like I said, although most of us are staying home these days, it feels like we're on a road into a world we were never in, a road leading to an unknown, mysterious destination. It's kind of scary, kind of humbling. There's no roadmap to where we're going. The GPS won't lead us there. We're kind of making it up as we go. 
So let us allow ourselves to take each day at a time, each step at a time, because we can't plan too far ahead. If ever there was a time that is forcing us to be present in the moment, this is the time. There is no place else to go but the journey inward. For many, it feels like a time of Sabbath where we have been forced out of our habits, out of our routines, out of our schedules. And I wanna share a little something. Do you see this uh, green set on your screen? That's a Havdavla set. Uh, that is the set, uh, the pieces you use for that ceremony, the Jewish ceremony at the end of Sabbath. Sabbath is such a precious time in the Jewish tradition, uh, and especially when um, uh, during a Jewish diaspora, right, when they were sent off into all corners of the world, when the uh, uh, temple in Jerusalem wasn't there for them, when they were sent off to, uh, kicked out of all their places to someplace else. Sabbath in the home, when you'd light the candles at sunset and then light them again and put them out at the end of sunset on Saturday, from Friday sunset to Friday, as uh, Saturday sunset, Sabbath for the Jewish was precious. This precious time when especially you couldn't go to temple, your home was the place, right? The sacred place. And even Friday dinners were often that sacred special time with the family. There was the world we knew before March 13th, when it was normal, right? It was so full of distractions. May this time we find ourselves in be a very profound time when we can really pay attention and be. Now we must truly attend to the household, right? It's everything, the sanctuary, the kitchen table, our office, our place to have Zoom conferences. If this is a time that has bought you some time, take it, just take it and relish it the best that you can. Some people will make pilgrimages to famous holy places like Mecca, the Wailing Wall, in Israel, Lourdes, France, or the Buddha's uh, Bodhi tree. So many holy places of significance to wander to with a hope of enlightenment or something to happen of meaning. But don't worry about all the vacations and travel we've had to cancel. One needn't travel far, just a simple meandering road trip you don't have to contact anybody if you take a long road trip or walk in the neighborhood, a trail in the woods, an afternoon dive into a good book, or if you're me, make it a good book of poetry, uh, looking out the window and seeing the signs of spring erupting soon, it, it should be, unless we get another snow. Any of these can fill one with awe there can be surprises or uh, provide one with an unexpected gift of wisdom, a chance but meaningful encounter, of course, two meters or six feet away, yes. If nothing else, perhaps it will give us a good head clearing. No need to take a fancy trip. May we simply make a pilgrimage to our own heart and soul. A while back, I shared in my monthly service at Unitarian House, you know, in those days before March 13th, I shared about the idea of sauntering. I think my whole life I'm a saunter, right? I'm not the kind of person that races down hill when I ski. I want to cross country ski and look around. Or I'm not a fast biker. You know, everyone loses me when I'm biking. I want to look at the trees and look at the house and look at somebody's flowers. I am a saunterer, yes. 
In this day and age, we understand the word saunter to mean walking idly or leisurely, but the intent is not that sauntering is walking around mindlessly, just the opposite. One meaning comes from the Middle English word meaning to muse. I love to muse or becoming absorbed in thought, turning something over in one's mind meditatively. Sauntering, uh, sauntering is about journeying, walking with full awareness and receptivity, with eyes and ears and head and heart open. You never know what might happen. If you're not paying attention, you just might miss it. Sauntering is about paying attention. Paying attention or you will miss the gifts all around. The gifts given so abundantly, whether it's conversation, a call from a, a cousin you haven't heard from in ages, whether it's a bird chirping outside. Do you know this morning, uh, two little boys from across the street were finally let out of the house. What I heard was a primal scream. <laughs> yeah, and it just made me laugh. But it isn't always easy to pay attention. The Reverend Mark Morrison Reed, in a sermon, Jogging in the Moment, shared that he spent summers communing with a road. I love that, communing with a road. He says, often I jog along. I'm not really there on the road. I just appear to be. My body is there, but my mind is elsewhere as I slow to a crawl and then halt to scribble in my little book. Often I miss the beauty of the moment as I run along, trudge along, captivated by my own thoughts, calculating how many extra pounds I'll lose if I up my mileage, brooding over an argument, making a shopping list, or planning for the future instead of savoring all that is around me. I breathe and try again, but it slips away so easily. Yes, it's hard to always be present. Later in his sermon, he observes, it is our attachments that can get in the way of living fully. Attachments to the past and our pains and regrets that keep us stuck there. Our obsession with what the future might bring and our exertion to control it keeps us from savoring the moment, as do our worries about things that may not happen. Well-guarded opinions meant to resist change, the chatter that fills our heads, our tendency to analyze rather than notice, and to judge ourselves and others rather than to accept. If there's ever a time we can't be too controlling about the future, now is the time. Let us not hear the chatter, but just breathe in, breathe out if you can. Turn off the TV, turn off the news for a while. Find that chalice in your house, make that chalice in, for your own home and light it. Contemplate that flame and what it means to you. Let it silence your heart and your mind to a place of quiet and connection with those thinking of you in this gathered community. Or look out the window and watch the earth get ready for spring. So back to this idea of sauntering. Raised Unitarian, Henry David Thoreau, in a wonderful piece on the art of walking, uh, walking, fleshes out the origins more of this word sauntering. In the Middle Ages, there were idle people who roved the country asking for charity under the pretense that they were collecting it for their journey to the Holy Land or in French, sans terre. So they came to be known as 
saunterers, or holy landers. Uh, they may have been idlers and vagabonds, so they also were sans terre, or without land or a home, yes? Without a home, but perhaps at home everywhere. May we be at home, even if no matter where we are, doesn't quite feel like home in this odd time. Let us remember to make us feel at home, yes? So Thoreau suggests walk is a sort of crusade preached by some Peter the Hermit in us to go forth and recon reconquer this holy land. May we make every place feel holy. I can tell you once I get to go out grocery shopping again, because I'm supposed to be self-isolating till Monday, because we drove to the US to pick up my son and drove back. Once Monday hits, I'm telling you, going grocery shopping will feel so precious. I love this idea of being a saunter, one seeking the Holy Land, but finding home or seeing the holy everywhere. Each step a miracle. It suggests a great purpose in every venture. But the purpose isn't necessarily a defined destination like a sacred site. Sauntering isn't about the destination. It's about being truly present in the journey. The spiritual discipline of sauntering is much like that of pilgrimage, mindful journeying. An attitude of sauntering is to be open to what comes in these days. Even if you're not walking, you can have in your mind a mind, a, a, a sauntering mind, yes? An attitude of sauntering. To allow the truth and wisdom of the situation to reveal itself. I think we are all realizing we are in the midst of a time of transformation and a little anxious for whatever is going to emerge. Let it be over. Let it come already. Back to normal. But wait. <laughs> Breathe in. Breathe out. Observe. Listen. Focus on each step at a time. Just one step at a time. In the Sermon on Pilgrimage, the Reverend Alan Taylor asks, what opportunities to connect with your heart are waiting for you? We may postpone them for months on end. There are so many things in life that if we just give them some attention, you know, do it now, reveal far more truth and wisdom than first meets the eye. These, this is from me, not Reverend Taylor, but so if you were postponing anything for months, hey, you can make those calls now. You can clean out the closet now, right? Back to Reverend Taylor. There are so many things in life that if we give them some attention, reveal far more truth and wisdom than first meets the eye. It is easy to be judgmental, to live our days in hurried anticipation of achievement after achievement, and thus lose sight of the wisdom, the beauty, and the authentic significance of what is available to us. I believe, Reverend Taylor says, that if we pace ourselves, pay attention, and intentionally make room in our lives for genuine encounter, we can uncover grace waiting to be manifested and thereby bless the world. So let us be saunterers, holy landers, passionate spectators of life, venturing forth to see what we might see and learn what we might learn, even if we are mostly staying home these days. I feel like we're on some sort of pilgrimage to where I'm not sure, 
but may we venture forth with open minds and open hearts and really pay attention. I have, I have a feeling we will have some stories to share. Now, maybe you're in a household like mine these days that's uh, fuller and louder than it was before March 13th, except maybe on the weekends, right? It can be stressful, and I'm thinking of you too. But we do, I don't know how we fit it in, because now I'm a full-time mom and minister and a homeschooler soon, right? Uh, I don't know how it is, but somehow we're finding some time too to have some fun. In my normal workday, I might not have been able to have as much fun, I guess you could say, um, and make some of the discoveries, see how much my kids have grown and all sorts of things. Uh, my 11-year-old, as part of the packet he got to go home, uh, was to develop a project. So um, here's one of his, he had to pick three and then the teacher were, was going to say which one we should develop, right? Um, we were, we're welcoming into our bubble, um, our family bubble, uh, a, a, a child care person and once a week a dog. She comes more often. And so what uh, Alex decided is we would have an experiment. Um, what's better, homemade dog treats or store-bought dog treats? Well, I was thinking I knew the answer, right? So what do you have to do? You have to measure, you have to make your dog treats, you know, so much learning, right? And then comes time for the experiment. So what do you think? Homemade or store-bought? Hmm. Well, Ripple the dog, it was so funny. Every time, side by side, homemade and store-bought, Ripple would even push aside the store-bought and eat the homemade peanut butter and pumpkin biscuits. Um, he'd eat them all. I mean, that was, she ate them all, no problem. But definitely the first choice was the peanut butter and pumpkin biscuit. Who knew? Just imagine all the fun discoveries we'll have in our time together. A journey can become a sacred thing. Make sure before you go to take the time to bless your going forth, to free your heart of ballast so that, you, that, so that the compass of your soul might direct you toward the inward territories of your spirit. May you travel in an awakened way. May you travel safely, arrive refreshed, and live your time away to its fullest. Return home, whenever that may be, yes. Return home more enriched and free to balance the gift of days which call you. May it be so. So this is the time in our service that we would usually accept the offering. You may go to our website or contact our finance manager at fmsme at firstunitarianottawa.ca if you're concerned about keeping up your pledge or some of you have made uh, extra donations at these times. Thank you so much. And maybe now all you can do is offer yourself in Zoom conversations, right? That's the way it goes. We give these gifts freely. We receive these gifts gratefully. We dedicate these gifts to the work of our congregation, serving human wholeness, caring for our planet, upholding religious freedom, welcoming the stranger, loving one another. So let us sing uh, number 1059 in our, hymn, in our teal hymnal, but I think you'll see the words shortly. May your life be as a song.
May your life be as a song. I'm about to extinguish the chalice with uh, to begin words adapted by um, from Kim Palma. Blessed be your journey along the stony path that only your soul knows. May belonging and joy be companions to your howling heart. Blessed be your work in the world, in your family and community. May your gifts shine and flow and burst and bubble from the wellspring of your living heart. May we all be in right relation with all of life's messy creation. Even that which frightens and repels bring lessons as you sit in silence, or walk, or run, or sing, may you feel the presence of your fellow travelers, meeting your heart wherever you go in your journey. May it be so, and let us sing. Go in joy, go in peace, go in love, and may all be well. <laughs>